Hi, Cheryl Locke here. And in this Paint.net tutorial, we're going to take some images, and we have a variety that we're going to use, and we are going to remove the backgrounds so that then we can take those pictures and turn them into something like this. Stay tuned and let's start clearing off some backgrounds. Okay, here we are with our first image. As you can see, this was a green screen picture and the lighting was horrible, but we're going to work with it. First thing I want you to know is this is right off of a camera, and it's like 4,000 pixels wide, which is really huge. So we're going to resize it for one, and we're also going to crop it. I don't want to have to worry about the dark and light spots when I start cleaning up my image. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over and get my crop tool. I'm going to crop as close as I can just to the image I want to work with so that I don't have to deal with a bunch of other coloring. So you just get your crop tool, image, crop to selection, and we're going to take away a lot of it so it's going to save us time. Now I usually like to go ahead and resize them. I would probably, whoops. We'll go ahead and put her at a thousand so it's something workable because I know I don't use anything bigger than that. Okay, now we've got it sized and cropped down. The next thing we want to do is go over to our tools and get the magic wand. When you get your magic wand, you're going to see the little X. I'm going to take it and put it as close to my image as I can without touching it, and we're going to put the X. I'm going to click. Okay, as you can see, this is changed colors. We have some specs up here we're not going to worry about at this moment. We can also see how it goes around her head, part of her hand, and it gets cut off over here. Now what I want you to do is when you're clicking your magic wand, watch your tolerance. Up here is a little bar, tolerance. Now if I move this tolerance to say like 47 and I click in pretty much the same spot, as you can see, it's too much and it's going to just clear out her clothes and her arm and a bunch of other things. So we've went too far. So we need to take it back down. We'll try another little bit down. And that's pretty good. Oh, we still have some over here on her arm. So yeah, it looks like 38 is probably as good as we can get. We'll go ahead and click there. Now to get rid of this, you can go over, get the eraser and erase, or just go on your keyboard and hit delete. And there you go. We now have the checkered background, which means it's transparent. Now I'm going to go down here to this big green spot, and that one works pretty good. So I'll go ahead and click delete. Now as you can see, we have some spots up here. We also have green around her head and her hands. Best way to do this that I have found is I go up and I zoom in. And I can take it pretty big sometimes, just depends on how close I have to get. Sometimes when you do this, then you can go to a spot, say this one on her hand, and use your little magic wand again, and you start cleaning up that way. It doesn't always work. You have to just try it and see how it goes. Obviously, it's not going to clean it up enough for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my eraser. Now once I have my eraser, you'll see when you bring it over, you can choose a size. The circle is how big it's going to erase in a spot. Now I know that way up top, I have some cleanup to do with these spots. Those I can just click and go. No big deal. But when I get over here near her face, I may or may not want a, a eraser that big. So you can go up here, click, and take it down smaller if you're going to work in a small area. Now there's different ways to do this. Some people will take it and just grab it and start moving it down and around. I don't happen to always be that great with it. So what I do is I, I'm going to get this a little bigger so I can work better. I take and make sure I am zoomed in big. I take and put my circle right next to the spot and I start clicking. 
click once with your mouse and let go and do this all the way around up close and it can take quite a while depends on how good your image is but you just keep cleaning and cleaning and changing the size of your eraser so let me take this back down for us as you can see I'd have a lot of cleanup to do on her and some of these take a long time and double check everything I'm not going to go through and clean the whole thing because that that's going to take a while so that's how you start getting your image clean making sure you've clicked and clicked and clicked so once after 30 minutes I would end up with a picture like this now to save this image once I'm all done cleaning it up you want to save go save as and I'll change it and you have to save it in a PNG if you want to be able to keep the transparent background so I just go ahead and make sure it's PNG after I renamed it and click Save now this is a green screen and it's mostly the same color we had a little bit of issue but not too much when you're working and want to make a transparent background the cleaner and less clutter in the background the easier so keep that in mind when you're taking pictures here we have a flower now here's the one I've been working on and pretty much got done but on this one we're gonna go get the magic wand so you can see here's my tolerance at 38 I'm gonna click here now as you can see it clears up a good bit of stuff and I could hit delete come down here now I'm going into my flower so I've got too much I'd have to keep taking this down and sometimes it gets to the point to where you can't do a whole lot with it you're almost better off going and zooming in and getting that eraser back and then starting your cleanup with your eraser and when you're working with something like a flower you can sometimes manipulate your your edges so if you have an edge that isn't smooth like over here if I want it smooth in my picture I can just smooth it out and nobody but me will probably ever be able to notice so you may have to use a lot of erasing and a lot of little detail if you've got a bunch of stuff in the background so keep that in mind and once I got done with it here it is and I would save it so once you have your background cleared and you want to take that image and make it into something new like here for the Grammys I did Elroy he's got his Grammy I made the background in the red carpet and put a green screened Elroy on so how I did this is I have my background that I actually made out of little one little square and lined them up and then I would go and I would do layer import from file and let me get the right file and here is the green screen that we saved I've got her all cleared off I import her as a layer I put her on and I can size her I can keep her the regular size and once I do this I can then deselect if I wanted to I would then put on my watermark my border whatever it is I want to do to complete it and save as and just to show you what else we can do I mean you can when you're working with a puppet or something silly you can pretty much do anything you want and nobody can say much here's the flower I clean now whether or not granny would go to the Grammys with a big ugly flower and a bee on it I don't know but then I can start making images that don't really exist so you can do a lot once you learn how to manipulate the backgrounds like I said if you've got a clean background and you use the magic wand and since I didn't resize it it's going to take a while but they'll be much easier to work with in bigger swatches the less color differentiation you have so 
That's how you make a transparent background, then start layering them on to make a unique, cool picture. Thanks for watching, and we hope this helps you to get some interesting things going on your social networks and your blogs. Be sure to subscribe to Hot Blog Tips here on YouTube for more tutorials.